Hello, my beautiful people, and welcome to our channel. For those of you who are first time viewers, again, welcome. We love having you here. And today we are blessed to have Helena Nemec. Her information is below in the description box. And she is going to help us do the part three interview of Sinead O'Connor. And of course, my lovely boy, Eric, will assist. Hi, Eric. I love yeah. you. Hi, Mama. I love you too. And Sinead, thank you for coming back if you're back. Yeah. Oh, she's here. And she says, thank you for having me. Oh, that's great. Are you ready for some more questions, Sinead? Yes, she is. <laughs> All right. And again, when we do these interviews with people, we never do anything that is voyeuristic or exploitive. I, I want to make that clear. The, the purpose of these interviews of notable figures is to learn from them in a spiritual perspective. So, all right, we will go. Sinead, what do you think about Morrissey? I don't know who that is. Calling everyone out on, on your passing. The Smiths Morrissey has taken to his website to scold the music industry in the wake of Sinead O'Connor's death. While many of the tributes to the Irish singer have focused on her indelible musical contributions, Morrissey is instead directed at those who hadn't the guts to support her when she was alive, you know, because you, you know, with the anti-Pope thing, you know, yes. support. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about Morrissey? Um, he's, he's feeling and projecting on the, um, the, the industry, how they exploit and are not there to fully support artists. Um, okay. So uh, she understands that and, um, and she thanks him for that, you know, um, because they really are exploited. <laughs> They're taken advantage of and um, it is changing somewhat, okay. but yeah, yeah. Hollywood and the music industry both tend to exploit yes. their talents. Yes. yes. Did you yes. get exploited by the music industry? And if so, what way? Um, on occasions, yes, she did. Um, financially, um, like you would sign a contract and um, when you want it to maybe a little bit more fairness in that contract or wanted it to be opened up, uh, they refused because you had signed that contract. contract so she contract. says to, yeah, she says to a degree, um, she was very young yeah. um, as well, you know, and uh, she's saying inexperienced in, in that way, you know, so. I, I think many young artists go through that. The same. Experience. Yes. Yes. Same it, it's like a big learning curve, you know. Um, and okay. once you've learned it, you've learned it. And I think that's part of why she really didn't mind, like the um, the pushback when her Saturday Night Live performance. Yeah. Um, she it really didn't upset her as much as people like a reset, might have thought. Like a yes. Reset. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next, Sinead, did you like the life you had here on Earth, even though it was a hard life? And did you know that you touched many people with your lyrics and your voice? So the first one. I mean, is there anything you liked about your life? Um, she's she's saying there was definite moments of joy, oh, and peace. Mm -hmm. Um, she definitely. Um, but she's saying that. Uh, it it there was there wasn't the balance. It was um, a lot more adversity than those moments of joy and, and peace. Um, but when she felt them, she she felt them, you know. And they carried her through a lot of the adversity. Those moments, those joyous occasions. Um, you know, she's talking about the birth of her children, and you know, just um, yeah. Okay. I was going to say something. I forgot it. Oh, yeah. D did some of that adversity you know, help you write your lyrics? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And it's what gave her that 
uh, when you hear her sing, she touches your soul, like so many, she sang like so many others, but it was from drawing on that passion from her own experience. So it that even brought that forward. The, your voice in a way, the adversity. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Like the, the passion that comes with that. Oh. If you had not gone through that adversity, you think you would have reached the level of talent that you did and fame? She's saying she would have gone beyond it. Um, she would have been able and been prepared to go beyond what she really is in awe of how many people she has touched personally. Yeah. You know, um, she said that she really did not realize um, on this, like in this plane, how many people, her music, her voice, her personality, how many people related to her and uh, were so um, shocked and, and aggrieved at her passing, you know? Um, yeah. It had a tremendous effect. So, yeah. So, so do you think that you would have touched as many people if you had not undergone the adversity that you had gone through in your life? She wouldn't have touched the people that she was meant to touch. <laughs> oh. That were meant to be impacted by her. Oh. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You were diagnosed with bipolar disorder uh, and PTSD from your abusive childhood, I'm sure. What is your perspective on this mental illness now from the afterlife on bipolar disease and PTSD? She's saying um, she's not positive about the bipolar. Um, she believes that a lot of it was from the complex PTSD. Yeah. Um, but she's saying how they want to label you and put you in a neat little folder and that's it. And it's not that way. There's... Um, concurring <laughs> you know mental health issues as well so um yeah she uh and eric's just saying that's true of so many so many that it's not just one label this is what you have and you know and it, she wants people to know that um with the ptsd bipolar, like mental health, you don't have to spend your whole life like that. Um, don't let them feel, make you feel like this is it. You have to live with this. This is, you know, because um, you really can, uh, how is she putting it? Manage it. Can you be, can be able to manage it in your day-to-day -day life much easier? Yeah. You know, well, it's weird because once somebody gives you a label, you have complex PTSD, it, it, it brings a permanence to it that might not be. Yes. Necessary. I mean, I, I had PTSD because of yes. me finding you, Eric, after you did what you did and suffered a lot from that. But um, yeah. So, uh, but there's also. But there, there, oh, there's maybe. tools. There's yeah. tools that help you through that. It It doesn't. Like I have that diagnosis as well um, from abuse and yeah. it, it doesn't have to, like when I look at how many years I struggled with it and now it's like I have tools in my toolbox yes. and so you, you're able to cope and um, uh, just function better in your day-to-day -day life. Yeah. And my, one of the tools in my toolbox is, Doing this, you know, it, it helps to heal me. Mm -hmm. so what are the right. lessons to be learned when you were are treated so badly as an innocent child? Well, she's saying she wants to say first that for her and for you, Elisa, and for many, many like you, um, 
I did not suffer the same kind of abuse as a child. The, the physical came later. There was other abuses. Um, no child should ever have to go through to that degree what was went what went through and um because even when i you know she talked about um soul contracts and stuff before um the degree to which the the trauma and abuse went was too far yeah. too much yeah it's not so it's not necessary to have to go that far to, right, to learn right. some sort of lesson yes all right yes. if you could change one thing or do one thing differently in your life Sinead what would it be have been a more present um supportive mother to her children yeah being in, in the present is so important for a mother. And, right. You know, I've struggled with that too. Being in the pre present yeah. moment is not easy for people who have been through the things that we have been through. Right. Was right. there a time here that you felt healthy and or totally in sync with life here on earth? And if so, what was that like? She's saying yes, like she had said previously, she did have those moments. Um, but the way she's explaining it to me is almost like manic. Oh. Like it would be like too much. Um, so it was, she never really felt that true balance of um those two you know um but she definitely she said she knew love oh, and um that uh she's saying so um in this time in this reality on this plane um all paths lead to self-love yes that's what we are all here for you know um she had like pieces of that but she wasn't able to build upon it and keep the momentum of that going yeah if that makes sense yeah um so how is ireland a better fit oh, well i want to ask you one thing i almost forgot uh, were you plagued? Did you have any negative entities around you or attached to you that that contributed or exacerbated your condition? Yes, she was very, very vulnerable to that. How about your mother? Um, Same. Oh, go ahead. Did her mother have? Is that what yeah. you're asking? Did her mother have? Yes. Yes. So, Eric, do you think that the main service that gets rid of these things, that would that have helped her? Or was. Yes, yes, it would have. And she is bringing up um, your point uh, in the previous interviews when you brought up the self love scalar work. Yeah. She is very, very passionate about that one and feels that, you know, that would benefit so many you know so <clears throat> she was appreciative that you and grateful that you had brought that service up <clears throat> um okay oh thank you uh <laughs> did you feel the outpouring of love and sadness that your passing caused Sinead? i mean could you tap into and feel that energy she's saying yes um that is why she's very much with her children, friends, loved ones, and, and even those that that didn't maybe know her personally, but that she had touched. Okay. Um, yeah, she's saying she she feels it. She feels that, and <laughs> she said it would have been wonderful to have felt that love oh. in the physical form. Yeah. Um. But she she really did not realize it until crossing. Yeah, that's, how much of an impact. That's the usual. 
How was Ireland a better fit than the U.S.? Or was it even? Ireland is, I call it God's magical country. Mm -hmm. And he very much, you know, um, with that, the magical, the people, but also the adversities. Mm -hmm. um, the material for songs. Go ahead. Well, it's it's the outward scale of what's going on individually. Yeah. It, it is put out to. She said like many of the wars that are happening right now and that, now that was, she's saying um, the troubles was a polite fucking word okay. for the atrocities that occurred, you know? Um, and she's saying that in the South, the violence didn't really touch the, the South of Ireland. So she didn't experience maybe the traumas that I had experienced growing up in the 60s and 70s when they were like at a very heightened peak, you know. Um, but she says it's it's a beautiful country. Um, she, oh, <laughs> um, she's just talking about my favorite song, which is with the chieftain's foggy dew. And that song was about her heroes. That was when the independent Declaration of Independence was written. And uh, she would love to see a united Ireland, you know. And she knows my heart wishes as well. Oh. Well, Ireland is one of my favorite countries. They're, they're so sweet. I call it the Texas of Europe because everybody's so nice. <laughs> Especially at the time. Yes. Now, do you <laughs> have a favorite song? And if so, what is it? And do you have a favorite artist? She's she's saying Bob Dylan was one of her favorites. Um, one of her own her own favorites. Um, she is saying that Foggy Dew is definitely one of her one of her favorites. Um, she says okay. nothing compared to you got too commercialized. Oh. So that um, even though she felt the passions and the empathy of lost love and, and singing night, and it wasn't her, you know, like she hadn't written it, but um, yeah. Well, that's interesting. That's the next question. Your beautiful songs, especially nothing compares to you. I know it was written by Prince, but you truly made it your own. The way you sang that song truly resonates with the heart and soul. Very special. And it becomes unforgettable. Is there a divine frequency in your voice? And Well, she's saying that she was she's able to tap into that frequency. Um, like every musical note has a frequency. Um, and that we've we've all had lost loves and you know our heart broken and and things like that and uh also her being so young um which is when you know most of us like the first cut is the deepest oh, it's the first yeah. you know so um yeah her, her just her passion her vibration everything just the stars aligned with that song yeah. is what she's saying interesting Love your version of the song. Nothing compares to you. What made you? What made you want to do that song? She sang at the time. She really felt it was intuition. Okay. Um, she realizes that uh, it was part of um, divine timing. Um, in her in her spiritual journey in her journey her life's journey now your iconic shaved head hairstyle shaved mm -hmm. hair hairstyle made you look one of a kind let me look one of a kind true feminine beauty was doing that a soul contract or you want to speak in uh, about that we we've touched on it in the previous version yes um yeah um 
she is sort of saying that at the root of that was the trauma. Um, and it was like a, a, a like it, it was easier for her as well. But she's saying it was like a signature, um, like like Johnny Cash, the man in black, who wore black for all those, you know, the underdogs and the suffering and, you know, um, that her shaving her head had something to do with that. And that was- Representation um, of, of suffering? Surgery. Yes, 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 yes. I got you. And inner beauty. And- yeah. Don't pay attention to the do. Pay attention. Yes, to yes, heart. yeah, yeah. To my heart, right? Yeah, right. Uh, were you part of Joan of Arc's group, Women in Another Life? No, she's saying no. Okay, can you describe another life that most influenced your last one? The one that most influenced this past one was the Irish famine. Um, middle 1800s. Um, she watched her mother, father, and siblings pass away. It, she emigrated at that point. Um, there was a lot of immigration, like, yeah. Where'd a million starved to death. Mm -hmm. oh. She, yeah, um, she went to America um, and she said that they were treated like shite. Oh, I know. Um, yeah, like, like <laughs> um, leaving that and thinking that you're going to, you know, the the dream, the, you know, and the way that the they treated the Irish was... Um, you know, not very good. <laughs> like more, more trauma, more. Um, and and like that's what she's saying about this life healing the generational karma. Yeah. In this life, you know, um, in this past life. So. Well, I'd like to ask you a question, Eric. You know, America has mm -hmm. a dark history of abusing others. The Native Americans, the Trail of Tears um the the blacks uh the irish and other immigrants mm -hmm. why i mean was that a, a lesson as a collective nation collective or just young souls yeah. what is it? why um and eric's i, mean, I just, know what happens happened to other with like the northern african well, that's, that's coast, what, enslaved yes. women and white women and it's just there's a it's all over the world but it seems to be just awful in our history well a lot of the settlers in america were from england the pilgrims uh you know so a lot of that from the british empire who at one time truly came close to ruling the world for such a small island oh. but that's how they did it that's what they did it was they went in they like divide and conquer and um it, it was it was like traumatic um so it and was... they go ahead. go ahead no go ahead. Oh, go ahead um he's saying that that was a necessary part of our history as well um mm -hmm. but with what has been happening more presently mm -hmm. um is showing that the the America is no different than any other country. Um, it can be attacked. It's vulnerable. It can have you know like all these um, and and that that is teachable. That is you know conscious expansion, conscious con like learning, learning right. from that. Right. So basically, what you're saying is imperialism was kind of a driving force toward these ills. Right. Okay. Right. Have you met up with Prince on the other side? If so, tell me about that meetup. Yes, she has. Um, she's saying it was uh, genuinely 
a joyful uh, reuniting. Mm. Um, she wants to talk about um, forgiveness, like, you know, when she forgave on in in the physical form. Right. Forgiveness is not just uh, I forgive you once and that's it. There are triggers, there are things that come up and it's like a layer. It's a process of layers of forgiveness. Um, and she's saying that uh, with Prince, um, he, he had mental issues as well, you know, and uh, drugs and alcohol and, um, but it all very much played out how it was meant to play out between them you know um no resentments no you know um she says when you cross over and you see everything from the whole picture yeah. the big picture it uh it, it makes a, a huge difference and obviously we're not meant to to know that or experience that until we do cross over but knowing and having trust and faith in that uh will help you know um when it comes to forgiveness she's also saying that when you forgive um it's for yourself exactly. every bit even yes yeah even more important. than the other person yes and it's important uh, mm -hmm. it's important component of self-love right correct yes yes but yeah it's like layers i know that from my own experience with my uh, younger sister who took all my father's money um from me and my other sister so uh and it, it's struggling to little bit by little bit forgive her yes yeah it, it, it's not just a I forgive you because I feel I have to or I must yeah. and that's it. it it's that is not the process yeah it's a, it's, a, it's a way of life that inner forgiveness yes. you know it's a yes a mentality it's just not a statement or shallow right, right 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 I, I agree and that's that's why that's what makes it so hard now have you met up with yeah. jo uh, pope john paul ii uh if so you know how was that whole thing like oops let me take a selfie with you i'm kidding i need comic relief she's um she's saying that he did understand that it was not personally at him it could have been any pope at that time like it, it was and they were trying to she's giving me a, a visual of the little boy sticking his fingers in the hole in the dam because that's right. what the Catholic Church were trying to do with this you know mm -hmm. And it needed to be brought forward and um, it needed to be exposed and continues to need to be exposed. So. Well, what was the personal meeting like with him? Love. Okay. Love. So did you at that point kind of understand, or maybe this is not true, understand that he kind of did all he could as a human uh, with that whole situation? Or did you feel like you could have done more, dude? What she's saying is we all do the best we can with what we know at the time. No one can act above their conscious level. Yeah. So it's not like people wake up and say, okay, I'm going to be a, a prick today or, you know, yeah. like we all do the best we can with what we know, with what our awareness is at the time. And that's built on our past, our upbringing, everything. It's just very complicated. Yes. Were you, well, are you a starseed? Yes. W from what constellation? I'm guessing Pleiadian, but I don't know. Orion, I, uh, Arcturian. She's, yeah, she's saying Arcturian. Oh, okay. Hmm. That's why I think I said, I'm guessing, but then yeah. uh, channel that for me. Uh, did you incarnate to correct the family bloodline? If so, what was uh if so was your son a part of that work? I'm not sure what she means by correct the or this person means by correct the family bloodline, but well, what she's talking about is generational karma. 
Oh, okay. And um, her son was a part of that, very much so. Um, and that uh, it will end with her. Like this is, she has completed that cycle. So. So that was a main, like, one main factor of your incarnation, of this incarnation? Yes, yes. Because we choose the families that we're born into. And uh, it's like all planned. Like, well, you know, before we come here. Yeah. Okay. Want to do this, 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 and this. You know, so. Generational karma. Check. Off the list. <laughs> Are you planning to reincarnate soon? And if so, will you reincarnate together with your son? She's I saying that she, yeah, but that and that's exactly what she's saying, Elisa. Is I need time. Yeah. Um, she's saying that her son will incarnate much sooner than than she will. Um, but yeah, right now she's um, she's saying it like she's in the rest, healing, love of adjustment. <laughs> oh, so nice. Yeah. I mean, you might never, if you don't want to. Is there a possibility you will never reincarnate? She's saying that she will because there was, um, there's unfinished business and that's all she's saying. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh -oh. All right. Please share something not many people would know about you. A secret hobby, maybe collecting so uh, something, a habit, a certain sense of humor, anything that's Probably fun. Uh, she she's she's got a really good sense of humor. Um, she's she's telling it to me like um, little personal quirks, like little things that she would do. Um, that would seem quirky to others, but they were calming and routine for her. Um, and again, she, she's giving that, you know, stepping over the cracks of, you know, jumping over oh, the yeah. cracks. Oh, yeah, I was wondering if there was a right, right. or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there were there was things like similar to that or doing something three times or, you know, repeating something three times, like just little, okay. little quirkiness, little okay. eccentricities, yeah. All right, so Sinead, if you could give any advice to youth today of today, what would you like to say? You matter. Mm. Do, do not feel alone with your feelings talk to someone if you can't talk to your parents talk to a guidance counselor talk to a teacher ask for support ask spirit for support god for support yes. yeah. um and it, it it will be provided you yeah. know um and that like suicide is the second highest cause of death of youth in canada Oh. Now, I don't know what kind of <laughs> further crisis is needed for, you know, this to be really dealt with in a, you know, um, not just like swept under the rug or, you know, and there's a lot more youth are going to be going through. Met. She said even COVID, even with COVID, yeah. the effects of what that lockdown and how what our children went through in that has still to be seen that and this is necessary because it will push for um she's saying that you know the assistance is there um but it's misappropriation of funds oh yeah but there's also divine assistance. You just have to ask. Oh, yeah. ask, ask. You, it's you always agree there. The whole COVID thing—it's it's, a—it's just a bunch of bullshit that we really should have just 
protected the elderly and and the you know um, the people with comorbidities, the the vulnerable, basically, and let everybody else get it. I mean, well, you said I, that it, there, there was a there was a great transfer of wealth to billion made well, a lot of billionaires because of of COVID. Actually, it's terrible, and a lot of separation between people. Yes. She said there was a real evil underbelly to that. Um, yeah. She's saying it, it was man-made. Um, and it was done for, for the reasons that, that you're speaking of. But to keep people apart, families apart. Um, Friends. For, I mean, we used well, to here, go to our was, neighbors all the time. And now since COVID, yeah. that's a habit that was broken. Same thing right. with my friend right. Robert. So yeah, I see that. It's yeah. good. It'll take gener a generation or more to get over that, I guess. Decades. Yes. Ago. Were you vaccinated? Well, Sinead? No. Okay. All right. Uh, last but not least, if you could give the collective any advice right at this moment in time, what would it be? Whether it's the full collective, United States, Ireland. She's going to go full collective, she says. Okay. Um, educate yourselves. Mental health is not something to be afraid of. Yeah. If the, the knowledge will disperse the fear so that you know how to handle it, how to, what's, what to look out for. Don't dismiss your children's warning signs as just oh it's a phase or oh mm -hmm. you know okay they're withdrawn but you know um do not miss those subtle changes in behavior um and she's just saying love one another be kind to one another accept one another because her mental health was used against her mm -hmm. she was easily dismissed yeah. because of her mental health when really it should be the opposite, yeah. you know. It wasn't um, needed. Love. Yeah. One, one, yeah. one saying I tell my kids, because I want them to live life in love instead of fear slash hate. I say, right. remember that the people who are most difficult to love are the ones that usually need it the most. So, and Eric says well, two things: we're here to learn how to love, and that we're here to remember that we are love. But anyway, go ahead, Sinead. Yeah. Um, well, she's, I was just thinking what I had always said was when children are acting the worst is when they need love the most. And Sinead is extending that to adults, everyone. Yep. When they're acting out the worst is when they need love the most, you know, right. which I mean, she's acknowledging that it's challenging for families and, you know, um, but at the end, like love, love, kindness, you know? Yeah. Love is all there is. Uh, yeah. Anything else you want to say, Sinead, before we, or Eric, if you want to say anything, either of you, before we close? She's saying, really, thank you, Elisa. It, it was oh, an, a, an honor oh. to, and like she said, she has so much respect and admiration for you. Likewise. And Eric's, Eric's just saying that um, look out because she's a powerful force and spirit and um, mm -hmm. she she is going to be guiding, working, supporting. Good. She's got lots to do. She's going to be busy. And Eric, Eric says, I'm going to keep her busy. <laughs> oh, and maybe you can help with the scalar work that involves mental illness. You're welcome yes. to be a yes. part of that. Just yes. join in anytime yes. you want. Eric, you let her know. Ooh. Yeah, she's just going like this. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much. And thank you, Helena Nimick. Thank awesome. You. And y'all check her out again in the description box, right? Okay. And love to you all. Love and love you, Sinead. Love you, Eric. Yeah. And, and they love you right back. <laughs> so hit the like, thumbs up, please. And subscribe, hit the notification bell and share. Love you all. Bye. <laughs> Bye. See ya.